right, so we got our LS3 here. I had Greg tune an operation GTO down there build for us. Uh, it's LS3 out of a 13 Camaro. Uh, we done a VVT DOD delete on it. We put a BTR Brian Tooley Stage 2 uh, cam and lifter kit in it. We went ahead and put our LH8 muscle car oil pan on it. And if you turn down here, we've got our Heights front subframe. We got our aluminum race bushings. And I'm gonna get the transmission mounted onto the motor. We're gonna get all this put on and start building the front clip out on this car. So that's what we got going on here today. And let's get it. Yep. Okay, so we got the subframe up here. As you can see, we have movement, so it's kind of adjustable. We don't really want it to be adjustable, but it's just how it's made because you got play in your bushings. So, is what I'm going to do is we're going to pick a point, and the point is going to be right here because we know that these two points on each side of our firewall is really close. So we're going to come off of this, I'm going to square, let's just square to that edge and do the same thing here and that's how we're going to square it. So that's exactly 64 to this where it right starts rounding. Okay. I'm to the outside. So, I'm to the inside and you're to the outside. You're right at 64. <laughs> I ain't kidding you. Let's switch. You, okay. You're reading the tape, and I hope. That way we're, we're looking at the same thing. You're looking at the same thing. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me that we're that good. Okay, that's to the you're inside. To the inside. I'm to Let the me in see. Let me look here again. Okay, yeah, you're right. Ha, we're gonna nail it. All right, the old junk. We don't need that no more. We got it. Now we, I'm gonna get on the forklift. We can let it down, weasel it out, and I'll be able to put the motor together. So I'm gonna take the motor and the transmission. Um, we're not gonna put the torque converter flywheel or anything in it. We're just gonna roughly mate them, and then I'm gonna set it in and just to make sure that everything fits. this bad boy out here. We have ourselves a 6L90 is what we have here. Uh, this, this motor and this transmission, they were born, mated together from GM out of a 2013 Camaro. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go in, uh, after we get all of our mock-up done, I'll go in and we'll send this to my transmission guy and my transmission builder will go in and he will completely go through this 6L90. Um, anyway, we're gonna get this mated to that. So I got our motor mounts laid out here. This goes on the motor. These are attached to the plates. This goes to the frame. And of course we have our drive shaft hoop and our transmission mount. I'm gonna get them mounted up today. And I'm going to get our front suspension built out and then we're gonna try to set the motor. Do 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 is good they mark at left and not right so 
We have motor map. I'm starting with the lower control arm. So let's ease this up in here. Sometimes it's nice just to have a, a mild rubber hammer laying around. Uh, if you're by yourself, you can just kind of give it some love taps. Get it love tapped around. There's that bolt, so we'll take this uh, 15 footer here. Ah, see, didn't even need the love tapper to get that bolt in. I have the coil over here. We take it and I'm gonna put it in right here. Slides in right through there. Okay. It's a nice tight fit. You're gonna take and you're gonna put your bolt and you're gonna drop it in right through here. And then also do the other one. There we have a lower control arm installed and the cool over installed. I have our upper control arm here. Get this upper control arm set on. Got our spindle. Get it on that now. I'll bring my control arm back around, and we're gonna line this up. You want to be careful so when you're jamming it in here, you don't run the start of the threads. Yeah. Okay. There we go. And there's your whole complete left front suspension knee. Okay, so here we're ready to put the rack and pinion in. I've got it set up, ready to go. So I have it setting in here. And you can see right here, I'm sitting tight. We can't put we can't put that in there because it's hitting the frame right here and this is hitting so I don't know what's going on here it's exactly by the directions so I got me a longer bolt <clears throat> round it up we got some washers rounded up and we're gonna try to get this thing set up in here so if you look, this was, that was the shim adapter, whatever bushing uh, they gave me. And so I couldn't get it in and out because of all of the, the room right here for the bolt that they sent. You can see this is the bolt that they sent for that. There's, it don't work, see? So then I dropped to this bolt and then I couldn't get a nut on it when I shimmed it out. So I just took washers and I shimmed that out. I called Frank over there at Heights and I told him what the deal was. And he says, man, he said they've been having a problem with that. And they're gonna change out that steering arm through here. Um, be this steering arm. Uh, is what we're talking about changing out. They had a redesign. They had a redesign and um, there he is. That's height. That's Heights calling me right there. Let's see what Heights has to say. Thank you for calling Heights. Ain't that fucky? <clears throat> All right. Press four for operating. Press five for accounting. What's the chances of him calling me? And then I was, I was talking to you guys and wasn't answering. Hey, this is George. Hey, George, can you put me on a line with Frank? He just tried calling me. It's Ron with D-Boat Auto, buddy. So while I'm waiting on Frank, got, uh, went ahead and I'm feeling frisky. Oh, there you are. Hey, Frank, Ron D-Boat, I missed your call. Yeah, no, no problem. I was leaving you a message and then you were... Okay, I got you. Um, 
yeah, I wanted to follow up with you here and then you apologize for the, the delay on my end. Uh, That's fine. So, regard, you had a couple of Pippin issues uh, that we were talking about. Uh huh. I so, sent you more pictures today, also. I saw them. Yep. Um, so, let's start with the rack. Uh, the mounting of that rack that we were concerned about, I have confirmed you do have the correct rack okay. and the problem is actually believe it or not the instructions rather than the rack um this rack it should fit on the cross member uh with no spacers they, they should not be required so you should be able to take pull those washers out of there and it should sit flat okay um so there's as far as that's concerned that that's something that we need to update on our side okay um, and then the more evident problem that you've got with that tie rod hitting the control arm. Yep. Um, so I, I thought this seemed familiar to me and <laughs> it's coming back to me now. Okay. Um, this is a somewhat common thing that we do uh, when the parts are getting locked up. The reason for Could that shut him down. these but instructions, um, if, you, if you scroll down through there, I don't know how far along you've got. I've so read through fun. every bit of it. Uh, actually, oh. the, the instructions I have is just a diagram. Oh, really? That's it. There's no construct. There's no instruction. I got uh, I got um, um, toe in um, caster camber, a uh, few basics, and a diagram is all I have. Okay. Well, then, then my instructions don't have much more than okay, that. Okay. Okay. Well, then we're probably on the same page. If I if I have something <laughs> extra, I'm glad we sent. That's it yeah. Me, that's but, fine. Um, the, the thing I wanted to point out was that this front end does call for quite a bit of caster. Um, okay. So what we I, I noticed do that in, in situations like this where we're just locking up the part, uh -huh. um, that interference is somewhat common. So what, what happens if you can if you can visualize this? I don't know if you've got the car in front of you. Oh yeah, sorry, it's sitting right here. Once once you go ahead and you dial in those those four degrees of caster. Okay. That is going to kick the top of the spindle back towards the Makes firewall. Sense. Makes sense. Which, yep. And then that's going to bring that tie rod up. Okay. That makes sense. I was kind of thinking that as I was pondering on it this weekend. Uh, of course, I don't I don't have our brakes set up on it. We've got the wheel woods from you, and I don't have them set up on it. And I thought, you know, I probably just ought to throw them brakes on here and uh, hook my alignment tool up, throw, pull the coilovers out, and then kind of set my ride height and then set that caster and and camber and try to go from there with it right well once we get the, the caster dialed in that, then that then then you got, should, we got, kick, should kick up and you'll get that clear okay so it's good it doesn't hit until you're till you get a good turn on it you know till you start approaching that tight turn and then okay. it wants to hit so uh but yeah just sitting there with the wheels straight it's fine so uh, yeah that's fine i'll get that done and then i'll pull them shims out of that and uh, mount that directly to the frame and go from there if i got any other problems i'll just holler back at you if not we'll we'll be good here absolutely if you're running to anything else okay you know. sounds good well i appreciate you buddy yeah of course thank you all right thanks frank bye-bye yep bye well there you have it that's such a tight tolerance on this system that you have to set caster major caster because it's four degrees of caster you have to set it and then set your um, set your camber in on it and you'll have you'll have what you need and i'll show you because i've been playing with this off and on off camera is that these wheels are basically sitting pretty straight you can see i can almost put my put my finger underneath of it right there but when you get that thing in a turn it starts to hit right there so it's what he's saying is is when you put your degree to this then it's what that's doing is that's actually setting that back up so we'll pull this and we'll have our caster setting up here like so and that's basically going to raise this up like it needs to be so that's what we got there so uh, i'll play around with that but i'm feeling frisky and i want to see if we can't get the motor stabbed in this thing today uh this afternoon
so now we got our motor in um, I'm playing here with this rack and pinion and it's not gonna work like he said it was gonna work because it's hitting the oil pan this is the muscle car oil pan from GM put on it that is recommended for this for this subframe assembly and uh, this is not gonna work you can't this only it will only go on one way so um, I guess I'm gonna call Frank back I'm gonna send him pics but we're touching this oil pan right here it is touching I mean I could probably put a piece of paper through it if you get down there and you really critical look at it so that ain't gonna work um, yes this just uh this ain't working like like uh you know it's said to work which is why i love doing this uh i'm gonna have to document this to send pictures back to height um i could raise it slightly in the back the transmission very slightly because i mean we're sitting on sitting on like four degrees right now four degrees is fine um two and a half is usually what i would typically shoot for but i mean this thing's sitting in here really nice it looks really well so i don't know that i want to try to raise it anymore because we're getting tight on our transmission tunnel and we have already agreed that we don't want to retunnel the car so that's what i got and that's that's where i'm at so try a couple different things here and see if we can make it work